So welcome to March's Office of Federal Emergency Relief Programs Office Hour. As we do every month, we have an office hour that we kind of highlight a few things in regards to the work that we are doing and information that we've received from the U.S. Department of Ed as it relates to the emergency relief funds. We are recording this office hour so that we can post it to our website after the fact. Um, if you don't mind introducing yourselves in the chat box, that would be great. Um, I think we have Keith and Wendy with us today. We are frequent uh, visitors of the office hour, so we appreciate your time. What we have done here is we have provided you with our contact information at the beginning of the office hour, just in case you happen to have a need to uh, leave early. We wanted to be sure that you had our contact information, but we'll run through introductions of our team. My name is Shelley Shassi Jandro. I am the director of the Office of Federal Emergency Relief Programs. Hi, I'm Karen Kusiak. I coordinate uh, ARP, um, also somewhat coordinating the performance reports once they come in with, with other colleagues here. Uh, yes, and I've, I've done Chris and CARES. I'm Kevin Harrington. I am the Gear and EANS coordinator. My Shasha, I am the federal fiscal coordinator. And we have uh, Deanna Roberts. She's management analyst, and she's not here with us today. Good morning. I'm Terry Beal, and I'm a management analyst. And the last member of our team is Natalie Owens. She's our procurement analyst. So just a few things that we wanna to cover today. As always, our objective is to be sure that we're utilizing the ESER funds effectively and in line with federal requirements. We will discuss timelines and spending today, highlight some of the performance report items that we've been hearing, and then also provide a few friendly reminders. So at first, we will spend some time to talking about where we are standing as of end of, as of, end of February uh, in um, spending our ARP fund. And um, I'm sure you have seen this graph several times, but it is updated as of end of February. So you can see there are there are timeline at the bottom. You can see when the ERP was started and when it will be ending. It will uh, the obligation time a, a period will end on 9-30-2024. And at the top of that axis are the percentage of spending amount or the sorry remaining amounts. So it starts with hundred percent, and we want all to spend all and at the end it is 0% remaining. So, and in between, you can see the number of SAUs and at, at this point of the time, like where we have less than 218 days remaining to obligate the fund, we would like all of our SAUs to be within 0% to 25%, there is a star marks there where we would expect all of the SAUs there, ideally. But we are in a real world, and you can see there are like 34 SAUs where their remaining funds is in between 75% to 100%. And we have 72 SAUs who are doing really good, and uh, they are their remaining balance is 0 to 25%. So our intention to share this with you is just think about it. Where you, where is your, um, you know, SAU standing and uh, let us know. I mean, think about what you can do to invoice us and get all the fund obligated by the, by September 30th. And let, and let us know if there is any way we can help you to, uh, you know, accomplish that. And 
yeah and um, uh, as you know the obligation period will end on september 30th 2024 and all the invoice needs to be submitted to us preferably preferably be prior to december 30th 2024 and here we um, we just want to emphasize one more thing that if you find that uh, you were um, reimbursed under um, incorrect project in ESA 3 or ARP ESA 3, the only way to address the inaccuracy is to return fund to that project. Um, and when you return the fund, everything will be uh, you know adjusted from our side and it will be reflected in GEM system, then you can definitely request reimbursement under correct project. So this is the only way we can fix this error. So you just cannot adjust it from your side like we used to do, uh, let the SAUs do under ESR 1 and ESR 2. Like you could adjust uh, or, uh, you know, journal the amounts and you can adjust it like putting plus and minus signs in the invoices, but that won't have, that won't be a possibility under ESR three because all the application and invoicing is project best. Thank you, Maisha. Um, so the next, yeah, the next section and slide numbers has changed. Uh, but anyway, the next section is about the performance report uh, and we're gearing up to approve those once they are submitted. Uh, so we do have, uh, it came up in our uh, meeting yesterday, the day before, we had a, our open office hour for the performance report. Uh, people were wanting more information, you know, definitions and, you know, what was the federal U.S. Department of Ed? What were they actually asking for? So we've made available the public document. Shelly has uh, linked it here in the slide. I've also linked it to our new resource page for this year's performance report, the year four performance report. So you can look for yourselves. And I've also listed the page. I've given you the URL for the U.S. Department of Ed page so that you can look at another document that has, uh, you know, in pr very precise definitions for what they're talking about. But as a review uh, for, and I think for folks who are here this, or on this meeting right now, this is largely review. The This year's performance report, the year four performance report is for fiscal year 2023. And those are the dates right there, July 1st, 2022 to June 30th, 2023. I have to stop and think about and recite those dates every time to make sure if I'm looking at a, a page that someone's asked me about to make sure we're zeroing in on those billing dates. Uh, we would like this perform, we need to have this performance report, this information that's in the hands of the SAUs right now, back to us by April 12th, which is the Friday, I think it's the Friday before April vacation. And if this is new information for you, the performance report is available in the GEM system and there's the uh, address for that. So uh, on our, just a quick review, um, I'm at the last bullet and then within that last bullet, the last bullet on the slide, that there's the URL for the new uh, page that we've created just for this year's performance report. And on that page, going up a couple of bullets now, you can find a Word document that has the same items in the same order as the performance report in GEM so that you can um, you know, break it up and hand it to people who need to help you collect the data and report the data. We also have a PDF version of it. Um, uh, as I referred to earlier, uh, we do have the Wednesday until the performance report is due through, so through the second week of April, I believe that is, we have um, open, office hours, a couple of us at least will be there to hear your questions and make some corrections if we need to, or invest, yesterday we investigated uh, something that someone uh, was puzzling over, some figures that weren't correct, and we were able to, once that was reported to us, we were able to figure out what was going on, and we corrected that, so come to those open office hours, you don't have to come right at 11, some will be here from 11 to 12 on Zoom, uh, come when you can, uh, you can register moments before uh, you know, it's one of those automated uh, Zoom registrations. 
And uh, just a reminder too, we uh, we are pre-populating. We haven't pre-populated it yet. This seems like an oxymoron, but we will be pre-populating uh, information for the FTE. And here's the slide. That's I was worried now what this slide was. Uh, for these two sections in part five of the performance report, the uh, because you you as SAUs have already reported this data to the main department of education we're just we have requested that data come from that other office and be dropped into this report for you but it's the the student groupings you know that the, the counts of students by um certain identity groups and also the um fte's which is part eight the fte positions because again you have reported that information previously this will be loaded into these performance reports. Now, the question came up yesterday. I announced that there is uh, one large district that had already completed their performance report. Uh, I didn't identify the district. And, and the question was, but but the FDEs weren't there. I said, oh, you're right. But I will circle back with the person who completed this report and uh, make sure that they agree that the data is correct on these pieces that have yet to be um, populated. And then another, another entity has a much tinier district has also completed their performance report, but they had absolutely no spending at all in any of the funds. So it was a, an easy report for them to do. So just a few friendly reminders um, in regards to the structure that we have in place we as a department have come together with other federal funded colleagues and we are offering an office hour that really focuses on fiscal matters the fourth Thursday of every month. So we had an office hour last week for what we're referring to as our business managers, but this office hour is really open to any and everyone who has any correlation or collaboration with business managers and, and the federal funds, whether that be our emergency relief funds or ESEA, IDEA, or Perkins. So we've been able to pull this, this group of individuals from the department together. What we do in this office hour is we highlight a overarching uh, topic that spans all of our programs, and then we dig in programmatic specific financial matters. We also have the ability to, to break out into um, breakout groups. So if you have a specific question, we have a representative from our team in those office hours. We just wanted to share that information with you, uh, again, just to be sure that you had it, but also to share with your colleagues within your SAU. The other item that we wanted to draw to your attention today, and we'd love some input from you folks, is uh, the US Department of Ed released updated information about late liquidation extension. So they released this information on January 9th. They essentially said the process that had been used for CARES and CARISA is going to be refined to be able to be utilized for ARP. One thing that I want to mention is late liquidation extension is a very specific item that is based on obligation that are timely and proper. So it's not a tidings amendment, which we might be familiar in other federal programs where we get an additional year to utilize funds. Late liquidation extension means that there was something that was timely and properly obligated before September, and there was a type of delay whether that was a delay in service or a delay in delivery of goods, then you need some additional time to be able to invoice and recoup and reimburse that expense. What we would like to do is we would like to take the information that we've gathered from the US Department of Ed and host a late liquidation extension webinar. We hosted this webinar for Carissa uh, beginning end of August, early September last year. We would like to know if you folks would like to have that webinar hosted before or after the performance report. Um, and I have a poll, but there's only two of you. So um, I think if you could just pop in the chat box um, your preference. We want to be mindful of the work that you folks have within the performance report. And that truly is a priority in this 
if we had to, to generate a list of priorities related to emergency relief, the performance report would be a priority because we need to have that information to the U.S. Department of Ed at the beginning of May. We need the information from you to be able to do that second phase of the performance report. So the late liquidation extension is really just highlighting, as I mentioned, the information that's been provided from the U.S. Department of Ed and talk through any questions that you folks may have. So Keith, I can see you're driving, so I just I want to be sure that we're we're safe. Um, but Wendy, if you don't mind popping in the chat box uh, your personal opinion, that would be great. And again, uh, it's a small sample size, but we want to be sure that again we're mindful of what you folks have on your plate and be able to support you in the best way possible. Wendy says now. Keith, uh, thumbs up if you agree, Keith. Sooner rather than later. Okay, thank you. <laughs> All right. So we will work on getting that webinar put together and also published um, so that you folks have the information. We'll shoot for the end of March, beginning of April, um, so that we have the time to, to pull the information together, be sure that we continue to have the latest and greatest from the U.S. Department of Ed, and we will send out a notice to all of you through uh, different venues, so through GEMS in particular, but also we'll send it off to Maine ASBO so that they have the information and can pass along to their business managers, because I think the components that is really important for both our program coordinators, but also our business managers to be aware of. Thank you for the feedback, folks. That was the content that we had for today. I have our, our resource slides here um, and also our contact information. The last slide that we have in our deck for today is how to kind of stay in touch and connected to the entire department, so the main Department of Education. Here are our social platforms. 